Samina Ayman was 34 years old and lived in Cardiff, the largest city in Wales in the United Kingdom. She attended Luxford High School and was marketing manager at Costco in Coventry. I couldn't find many details about her personal life, but what is known is that Samina was very dear to her family and also to her co-workers. It was at the Costco store that she worked at in 2014 that Samina met 41-year-old Roger Cooper. He was a warehouse manager and had worked in logistics at the same store as Samina for over 20 years. Although Roger was married, Samina eventually became romantically involved with him and became his mistress. During this relationship, Roger promised several times that he would leave his family and that he would have a peaceful life with Samina, but everything was nothing more than promises. Because they both worked at the same company, their relationship was secret even among their friends, as relationships between employees were prohibited. At the end of 2014, Samina began to pressure Roger even more for him to divorce his wife, and in the midst of a small conversation with her co-workers, she ended up discovering that Roger had another lover besides her. Obviously, the woman was furious. She threatened to end the relationship and still tell everything to his wife and also to the owner of the store where they worked. Despite all of Samina's fury, Roger managed to convince her that he had nothing to do with the other woman who worked with them and assured her that he would file for divorce in January of the following year, as soon as he spent the holidays. At the end of November 2014, Roger promised Samina that he would spend Christmas with her. She then decided to book two nights, 24th and 25th of December, at the Hotel Birmingham in Mel Mason, paying 500 pounds for the stay and also confirming the meals that would be served in the room for the Christmas Eve celebration. On Christmas Eve, December 24th, 2014, Samina worked at the store until 4 p.m. When she left, she stopped by a liquor store to buy a bottle of champagne. Then she got into her vehicle and drove off towards the Hotel Birmingham, where she had made her reservations. Roger, who was in his own car, was right behind her following her down the road. At a certain stretch, Samina parked her car and Roger did the same. They then transferred all her luggage to Roger's car and they both continued their journey together in his vehicle. During the trip, the woman called her sister to find out how her mother was doing, as she had just undergone surgery. On that same call, Samina confirmed that she would be at her parents' house on Boxing Day for the family Christmas celebration over lunch, something they had arranged months before. She thought Roger was going to the Birmingham Hotel, but in fact, he was driving to Leicester, to the home of his brother, a man named David Cooper. It is not known if Roger had made any excuses along the way as to why he left the route, but the fact is that they arrived at David's house around 5 p.m. on the 24th. Upon arriving at the scene, Samina was attacked by Roger and his brother David. David covered her mouth and nose with a towel soaked in chloroform, as he continued this until the woman could no longer breathe and died. At around 6.25 p.m., Roger was on his way back to Coventry to spend Christmas Eve with his family and left Samina's body with his brother David. David then wrapped the body in a towel and then in a tarp and placed it in a corner inside a warehouse that belonged to him. On the way home, Roger stopped on the road to pick up Samina's car, abandoned on a deserted street in Luton, and then returned home by taxi. He also sent a message on Samantha's cell phone wishing him and some friends Merry Christmas. In this way, he thought he would create an impression that she was still alive. In the late afternoon of December 26, Samina's family tried to contact her and failed. As she didn't show up as arranged with her sister, they decided to contact the police and report her missing. Police officers immediately started investigations. In addition, the woman's disappearance on Christmas Eve was reported on social media and the local media, which left the entire community moved, causing many people to volunteer to help in the search. Officers were given access to security camera footage that shows Samina leaving work, buying champagne and then getting into her car and driving away. But with no clue as to where she might be, the police decided to track her cell phone using cell towers installed in the area. That way they would be able to see which tower Samantha's cell phone had connected to in order to know her approximate location. On December 30, 2014, the police discovered that Samina had gone to Leicester, specifically to David Cooper's house, and Roger Cooper's cell phone showed that he was also in the same place. At the time, David Cooper was 39 years old, an ex-soldier, 
running a cafe, and also working as a doorman. He lived on Hewenden Drive in Leicester, the same address where Samina's cell phone pin indicated that she was at around 5 p.m. on December 24th. On January 1st, 2015, Roger Cooper was taken in for questioning. Throughout the process, he denied any involvement in the disappearance of Samina Hyman. On January 2nd, it was David Cooper's turn to be taken in for questioning, and like his brother, he denied any involvement in the woman's disappearance. However, on January 4th, the police confronted David with all the evidence they had, and the man ended up confessing part of the events that resulted in the crime. On January 7th, 41-year-old Roger Cooper and his 39-year-old brother David Cooper were arrested and charged with the crime against 34-year-old Samina Iman. The next day, David recanted his confession and tried to request a new interview with the detectives, but was denied. On January 11th, the arrest of the brothers reverberated throughout local media. With that, a friend of David who saw the report called the police saying that before being arrested, David had given him a set of keys that were for a subdivision in Groby Road in Leicester, where the brothers had some properties. On the same day, detectives along with a forensic team went to the site and found a shed that belonged to David Cooper, and that ironically had a sign written, Do not disturb me, I have no place to hide the bodies. The site was large and underwent a complete inspection, and only four days later, on January 15, 2015, Samina's body was found in a deep grave. Police officers also found her car, which was abandoned by Roger days later. In October 2015, the trial of the two brothers began, and the evidence presented against them by prosecution in court was appealing. According to messages exchanged between the brothers, it was found that they planned the crime more than one month before, and used phrases inspired by the Star Wars movies to communicate. In addition to other texts in French, are codes that were later translated. It was also discovered that the two had planned to take the woman's life on December 11, 2014. At the time, Roger told Samina that he had booked a room at the Premier Inn Hotel in Solaho and that she was supposed to go there first and then he would get there so they could have a romantic afternoon. His and his brother David's intention was to intercept the woman in the middle of the road and thus take her by force and then take her life. However, their plan was frustrated as Samina went to the place by taxi and not with her own car, thus preventing them from trying to catch her since in addition to her, they would also have to deal with the taxi driver, and they knew that this would be difficult. In this way, Samina ended up entering the hotel, and when she was informed that there was no reservation in Roger's name on hers, she got back in the taxi and left. Later, Roger made an excuse for her, saying that he confused the name of the hotel with another one, and ended up sending her the wrong address, so Samantha didn't suspect anything and had no idea of the danger she was in. The prosecution also produced evidence which was found on David's computer confirming the purchase of a 200ml bottle of chloroform on December 8th for £12. Also, the bottle of champagne that Samina bought after she left her job was found inside David's fridge. Another revelation that startled everyone following the case was that the coroners detected a set of several heavy metals in Samina's organism, such as antimony, cadmium, tin, mercury, and arsenic. According to the doctors, in order to have that amount in her body, the victim had been ingesting it for some time, which indicated that she was being poisoned by Roger. It was found that Roger was juggling his relationship with three women at the same time, and when Samina found out about his other lover and threatened to expose everything, which would end his marriage and also his job, he decided to put an end to her. What prosecutors didn't quite understand was why Roger's brother, David Cooper, got involved in this and helped him take the life of a woman he didn't even know. After David disposed of Samina's body in the shed, he sent a message to Roger alluding to Star Wars, which meant that he had completed the job, and that was a crucial point in investigations. Also during the trial, Evidence was presented that Roger had abandoned the victim's car and returned days later with cleaning products to clean it and try to erase any evidence that was in it. On October 21, 2015, the Birmingham court found Roger Cooper and his brother David Cooper guilty of the crime against Samina Iman. With that, the two were sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after serving 30 years of their sentences. 
family and friends are not satisfied with how Roger managed to deceive Samina. Some say that despite her personality not showing, Samina was a lonely woman and that certainly contributed to her becoming a victim of the man. Deep down, Samina believed that Roger would indeed leave his wife for her and that they would be happy together, but in the end, the romance ended in tragedy. Alright folks, that's it for today. Thanks for watching until the end, best wishes and I see you next time.